Jacob stayed and lived in the land of Canaan. This is the same land where his father had lived. This is the story of Jacob's family. Joseph was a young man, 17 years old. His job was to take care of the sheep and the goats. Joseph did this work with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah. Bilhah and Zilpah were his father's wives. Joseph told his father about the bad things that his brothers did. Joseph was born at a time when his father Israel was very old, so Israel loved him more than he loved his other sons. Jacob gave him a special coat, which was long and very beautiful. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than he loved them, they hated their brother because of this. They refused to say nice things to him. One time, Joseph had a special dream. Later, he told his brothers about this dream, and after that, his brothers hated him even more. Joseph said, I had a dream. We were all working in the field, tying stacks of wheat together. Then my stack got up. It stood there while all of your stacks of wheat made a circle around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said, Do you think this means that you will be a king and rule over us? His brothers hated Joseph more now because of the dreams he had about them. Then Joseph had another dream, and he told his brothers about it. He said, I had another dream. I saw the sun and the moon and eleven stars bowing down to me. Joseph also told his father about this dream, but his father criticized him. His father said, What kind of dream is this? Do you believe that your mother, your brothers, and I will bow down to you? Joseph's brothers continued to be jealous of him. But his father thought about all these things and wondered what they could mean. One day, Joseph's brothers went to Shechem to care for their father's sheep. Jacob said to Joseph, Go to Shechem. Your brothers are there with my sheep. Joseph answered, I will go. His father said, Go and see if your brothers are safe. Come back and tell me if my sheep are all fine. So Joseph's father sent him from the valley of Hebron to Shechem. At Shechem, Joseph got lost. A man found him wandering in the fields. The man said, What are you looking for? Joseph answered, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are with their sheep? The man said, They have already gone away. I heard them say that they were going to Dothan. So Joseph followed his brothers and found them in Dothan. Joseph's brothers saw him coming from far away. They decided to make a plan to kill him. They said to each other, Here comes Joseph, the dreamer. We should kill him now while we can. We could throw his body into one of the empty wells and tell our father that a wild animal killed him. Then we will show him that his dreams are useless. But Reuben wanted to save Joseph. He said, Now let's not kill him. We can put him into a well without hurting him. Reuben planned to save Joseph and send him back to his father. When Joseph came to his brothers, they attacked him, tore off his long and beautiful coat. Then they threw him into an empty well that was dry. While Joseph was in the well, the brothers sat down to eat. They looked up and saw a group of traders traveling from Gilead to Egypt. Their camels were carrying many different spices and riches. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit will we get if we kill our brother and hide his death? We will profit more if we sell him to these traders. Then we will not be guilty of killing our own brother. The other brothers agreed. When the Midianite traders came by, the brothers took Joseph out of the well and sold him to the traders for 20 pieces of silver. The traders took him to Egypt. Reuben had been gone, but when he came back to the well, he saw that Joseph was not there. He tore his clothes to show that he was upset. Reuben went to the brothers and said, The boy is not in the well. What will I do? The brothers killed a goat and put the goat's blood on Joseph's beautiful coat. Then the brothers showed the coat to their father. And the brothers said, We found this coat. Is this Joseph's coat? His father saw the coat and knew that it was Joseph's. He said, Yes, that is his. Maybe some wild animal has killed him. My son Joseph has been eaten by a wild animal. Jacob was so sorry about his son that he tore his clothes. Then Jacob put on special clothes to show that he was sad. 
He continued to be sad about his son for a long time. All of Jacob's sons and daughters tried to comfort him, but Jacob was never comforted. He said, I will be sorry for my son until the day I die. So Jacob continued to be sad for his son Joseph. The Midianite traders later sold Joseph in Egypt. They sold him to Potiphar, the captain of Pharaoh's guards. About that time, Judah left his brothers and went to stay with a man named Hira from the town of Adullam. Judah met a Canaanite girl there and married her. The girl's father was named Shua. The Canaanite girl gave birth to a son and named him Ur. Later, she gave birth to another son and named him Onan. Then she had another son named Shelah. Judah lived in Kezib when his third son was born. Judah chose a woman named Tamar to be the wife of his first son Ur. But Ur did many bad things. The Lord was not happy with him, so the Lord killed him. Then Judah said to Ur's brother Onan, Go and sleep with your dead brother's wife. Become like a husband to her. If children are born, they will belong to your brother Ur. Onan knew that the children from this union would not belong to him. He had sexual relations with Tamar, but he did not allow himself to stay inside her. This made the Lord angry, so he killed Onan also. Then Judah said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Go back to your father's house. Stay there and don't marry until my young son Shelah grows up. Judah was afraid that Shelah would also be killed like his brothers. So Tamar went back to her father's home. Later, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. After Judah's time of sadness, he went to Timnah with his friend Hira from Adullam. Judah went to Timnah to have the wool cut from his sheep. Tamar learned that Judah, her father-in-law, was going to Timnah to cut the wool from his sheep. Tamar always wore clothes that showed that she was a widow. So she put on some different clothes and covered her face with a veil. Then she sat down near the road going to Enam, a town near Timnah. Tamar knew that Judah's younger son, Shelah, was now grown up, but Judah would not make plans for her to marry him. Judah traveled on that road and saw her, but he thought that she was a prostitute. Her face was covered with a veil like a prostitute. So he went to her and said, Let me have sex with you. Judah did not know that she was Tamar, his daughter-in-law. She said, How much will you give me? Judah answered, I will send you a young goat from my flock. She answered, I agree to that, but first you must give me something to keep until you send me the goat. Judah asked, What do you want me to give you as proof that I will send you the goat? Tamar answered, Give me your seal and its string and walking stick. Judah gave these things to her. Then Judah and Tamar had sexual relations and she became pregnant. Then Tamar went home, took off her veil that covered her face, and again put on the special clothes that showed she was a widow. Later, Judah sent his friend Hira to Enam to give the prostitute the goat he promised. Judah also told Hira to get the special seal and the walking stick from her, but Hira could not find her. He asked some of the men at the town of Enam, Where is the prostitute who is here by the road? The men answered, There has never been a prostitute here. So Judah's friend went back to Judah and said, I cannot find the woman. The men who live in that place said that there was never a prostitute there. So Judah said, Let her keep the things. I don't want people to laugh at us. I tried to give her the goat, but we could not find her. That is enough. About three months later, someone told Judah, Your daughter-in-law, Tamar, sinned like a prostitute, and now she's pregnant. Then Judah said, Take her out and burn her. The men went to Tamar to kill her, but she sent a message to her father-in-law that said, The man who made me pregnant is the man who owns these things. Look at them. Whose are they? Whose special seal and string is this? Whose walking stick is this? Judah recognized these things and said, She is right. I was wrong. I did not give her my son, Sheila, like I promised. And Judah did not sleep with her again. The time came for Tamar to give birth. She was going to have twins. While she was giving birth, one baby put his hand out. The nurse tied a red string on the hand and said, This baby was born first. But that baby pulled his hand back in, so the other baby was born first. So the nurse said, You were able to break out first. So they named him Perez. 
After this, the other baby was born. This was the baby with the red string on his hand. They named him Zerah. Judah's sons were Ur, Onan, and Shelah. Bathsheba from Canaan was their mother. The Lord killed Ur, the first son, because he saw that he was evil. Judah's daughter-in-law, Tamar, gave birth to Perez and Zerah. So Judah had five sons. Perez's sons were Hezron and Hemuel. Zerah had five sons. They were Zimri, Ethan, Heman, Calcol, and Darda. The traders who bought Joseph took him down to Egypt. They sold him to the captain of Pharaoh's guard, Potiphar. The Lord helped Joseph become a successful man. Joseph lived in the house of his master Potiphar, the Egyptian. Potiphar saw that the Lord was with Joseph and that the Lord helped Joseph be successful in everything he did. So Potiphar was very happy with Joseph. He allowed Joseph to work for him and to help him rule the house. Joseph was the ruler over everything Potiphar owned. After Joseph was made the ruler over the house, the Lord blessed the house and everything that Potiphar owned. The Lord also blessed everything that grew in Potiphar's fields. The Lord did this because of Joseph. So Potiphar allowed Joseph to take responsibility for everything in the house. Potiphar didn't have to worry about anything except deciding what to eat. Joseph was a very handsome, good-looking man. After some time, the wife of Joseph's master began to pay special attention to him. One day she said to him, Sleep with me. But Joseph refused. He said, My master trusts me with everything in this house. He has given me responsibility for everything here. My master has made me almost equal to him in this house. I cannot sleep with his wife. That is wrong. It is a sin against God. The woman talked with Joseph every day, but he refused to sleep with her. One day, Joseph went into the house to do his work. He was the only man in the house at the time. His master's wife grabbed his coat and said to him, Come to bed with me. But Joseph ran out of the house so fast that he left his coat in her hand. The woman saw that Joseph had left his coat in her hand and had to run out of the house. She called to the men outside and said, Look, this Hebrew slave was brought here to make fun of us. He came in and tried to attack me, but I screamed. My scream scared him and he ran away, but he left his coat with me. Then she kept his coat until her husband, Joseph's master, came home. She told her husband the same story. She said, This Hebrew slave you brought here tried to attack me, but when he came near me, I screamed. He ran away but he left his coat. Joseph's master listened to what his wife said, and he became very angry. So Potiphar put Joseph into the prison where the king's enemies were held, and that is where Joseph remained. The Lord was with Joseph and continued to show his kindness to him. So the commander of the prison guards began to like Joseph. The commander of the guards put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. Joseph was their leader, but he still did the same work they did. The commander of the guards trusted Joseph with everything that was in the prison. This happened because the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord helped Joseph be successful in everything he did.